All right, I'm gonna show y'all how to change out a TX valve on a carrier unit. It's a ton and a half unit. There's a the model information. A couple things you're gonna do now. I already have the panel off, and I've got the refrigerant pumped into the compressor outside. So there's no refrigerant in here. So what we're gonna do is we've got to sweat out that line there. We're going to disconnect that nut there. We're also going to take off the um, temperature bulb there that's strapped onto the suction line. And also going to sweat this out. I'm just going to come in here with some tin snips and cut off these clamps. bulb off of there show you all uh, see there's a little hole right there where that pipe goes into see it's not too hot right now it's hard to get a focus but it's got a little hole on the tip of that we're gonna have to put that back in um, we'll have to put the new one back in that comes along with the new TX. Alright, so this pipe, you definitely want to have two pipe wrenches, I mean, two pliers, I mean, for this fitting here. So you just unscrew that. That's going to loosen up. Alright. Last but not least, we're going to unsweat that line right there. Well, that didn't go as planned. Pipe broke, but that's okay. We're just going to cool it off. Cut that. And we'll just put that uh, new piece that's cut into the TX valve. Guys, so what I should have done was leave that fitting on and sweated this line out first. I usually do. I guess I was just nervous trying to get this camera angle correct. But anyway... I'm going to uh, just use a pipe cutter and put, cut the pipe here and just do it that way. It's not going to matter. It'll be a nice clean uh, nice clean cut here for the, for the new TX. So here's a new TX valve. Make sure you put this washer on here. Don't forget that. Probably leak out if you don't. The trickiest part of this whole process is probably this small line. Is uh, you know sealing that in, 
brazing it in without sealing this little tiny hole because then you'll probably have some issues and um, other than that it's not too bad just a little tedious all right so let me get this hooked on here just kind of loosely screw it on um, just to give it something to hold on to All right, so I'm gonna get this small capillary tube here in the pipe, and right there's that hole. All right, got that in. All right, now we're gonna, well, it just popped out, but I'll have something there to hold it. And um, basically what we're gonna do is sweat that in. It's not gonna take much, and we'll be on our way. Well, like I said, it doesn't take much, and I'm hoping that it wrapped around the bottom side of that. Uh, might need a little bit more. I just might need to heat a little bit. I'm trying to be careful because you don't want to get to the aluminum side of that coil. Uh, you'll definitely have a um, you'll have a bad problem. It'll you'll probably uh, melt some of that aluminum, and you'll be replacing the coil. Alright, so I uh, put a little more heat to it to make sure that it was uh, brazed in well. Um, next up is going to be the liquid line. We'll get that uh, sweat in now. I'm happy with um, where we're at so far. I've got the the liquid line sweat in. I've got the capillary tube in there. I'm gonna tighten up this fitting and put on the bulb, and we'll be on our way. All right, so we got a small capillary tube in. We've got the bulb clamped. We've got our nut tightened. Liquid line sweat in. And last thing really is to get this clamp back on. So I'll do that and then we'll charge this thing back up. All right guys, so I got it recharged and um, it's been running for about an hour or so. And as you can see, the temperature is 72 in here and it is set at 70. So it's working like it should. It was 77 while I was doing the work. So anyway if you guys have any questions uh, leave them down there in the comments and uh, thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe if you like my videos appreciate it